We live in a world of validation. Social media has completely taken over our lives and fame has become way more accessible than ever. Nobody cares about how much money you have in the bank because attention is the new digital currency. The more you earn, the more wealthy you become. Wealth is now equal to popularity. Likes, comments, shares, selfies, super chats, live streams, shout outs, subscribers, followers and ratings. These are the modern synonyms of popularity. But if we try to define popularity in just one word, spotlight would be the most appropriate choice. The word might sound archaic now, but it sure hasn't lost its relevance. Spotlight is what we crave or are made to crave from the day we are born. Be it getting the best grades in school, securing a top rank in competitive exams, or landing a top job with a very handsome salary package, we are always told to be the best and leave behind the rest. There's no harm in improving yourself or doing better in your life. What does become harmful is when we are forced to run behind the spotlight even without our choice. We are pushed to alter our own plans for life and sacrifice our own choices to follow a direction of the spotlight which will grant us fame. Written and directed by Anvita Dutt, Kala which is streaming on Netflix is a hauntingly meditative approach to narrating the story of the spotlight. Just like how we noticed a highly creative use of color on Bulbul, this time the makers of Kala play with the direction of light by also primarily using a dual tone color palette. I was honestly at loss for words after watching the film, but in this video I will try my best to explain how the use of spotlight acts like a metaphorical narrator of this story of Kala. The film opens with a fast paced tracking shot of the protagonist walking towards the balcony. And from the first shot onwards, we are introduced to a harsh flare of light pointing towards the character. We cut to a photographer who is trying hard to capture a glimpse of this personality who is waving at her fans. But notice how in this shot the character is made to hide behind that same harsh flare of light. While photographers continue to change their camera flash, which also gives us an idea of the period in which the story takes place, the source of the light flare as a reflection of a trophy is revealed. This depicts how the reason behind this fame is the trophy. We then cut to a close up of the protagonist with the sound of the camera clicking. And notice how the warm light of the camera flash is covering the face of our protagonist. The warm nature of the flashlight represents the warmth of love that she has received for her achievement. As the camera flashes continue to galore and fill up the room, the wide shot also introduces us to the atmosphere of this world around the protagonist. A world that seems devoid of darkness from all sides. When a journalist asks how she is feeling, she replies, Aisa lag raha hai ki jaise thak kar ghar aai hoon, or maane darwaza khola hai. You will notice that while she gives this answer, the camera is now shooting the left part of her face that's covered in shadow with a low angle. I think this probably is a hint to the audience that there is a darker side to this question. She snaps back with the next question followed by the sound of a camera flash. While she is able to answer a few more questions, there's one question that troubles her the most. That question takes the audience to a flashback where inside a house surrounded by a snowy landscape and a strong blizzard, we meet a mother who is waiting to see her two newborn babies. This is where the use of color tones and light will be established for the entire film. Firstly, the mother meets her daughter. The inclusion of a bright color tone behind her, which looks like a mix of orange and yellow, portrays how happy she is. But as soon as she is informed about how her son died in utero, notice how the color tone slowly loses all its warmth. The light behind her begins to fade and we see a cold, dark blue tone occupying the ambience of the scene. While she feels grateful and caresses her daughter Kala, the mother is informed about how her son was a weaker child and found it difficult to survive because of being deprived of nutrition by the stronger child, the daughter. We immediately notice a sudden change in the behavior of the mother and the cool dark blue tone conveys the same feeling of emotional frost and cold behavior of the mother towards her daughter. Once again the light comes into play at this moment when Kala's mother is still angry for not having a son. The way light falls on the empty side of the cradle and not on Kala corroborates the disappointment of not having a true male heir. The disappointment continues to surround the world of Kala and her mother. It stays cold, but Kala remains unaware of this coldness. She looks up to her mother and aspires to be like her someday. Or does she? Well, we don't know yet. But her mother is determined to pass on her musical heritage to Kala, by hook or by crook. 
In this scene, when she throws the responsibility of adopting the family legacy on Kala, we notice how the spotlight falls directly on her. In the case of Kala, the light is falling around her but not directly putting her in focus. This explains how she is not considered worthy of becoming the rightful heir and how she has to put more effort because of her gender to deserve the honor of being known as a musical maestro. We cut back to the present where unlike in the past, the spotlight is owned by Kala even when she is in bed. But despite that ownership, she doesn't seem to be resting in peace. We might think that after winning such a prestigious award, her mother must have considered her being a deserving achiever. But apparently, that's not the case. As I said, Spotlight is the narrator of this story. And just when Kala is informed about not receiving a call from her mother to congratulate her, the Spotlight starts dimming. And now we begin to realize that our protagonist cares for her mother's approval rather than the approval of her audience. When she tries to connect with her on call, the protagonist is once again put under the spotlight of her achievement. This also reflects her expectation of her mother being finally proud of her singing abilities. But in this next shot, we notice how the spotlight is far from her reach and is now creating a silhouette. This is a stark difference from the previous shot where the spotlight is behind her. Let's hold that thought and move ahead to the next scene when Kala is being captured by the camera flash to highlight her achievement. Once the reporter and her secretary leaves the room, she takes a gander at all her trophies. And now something happens which takes her breath away. This is a haunting reminder from someone who claims to be the rightful owner of the spotlight instead of Kala. But unlike the warm surroundings, this harbinger of fear arrives with a chilling reminder that the golden vinyl belongs to him and not Kala. Though this reminder turns out to be momentary, it leaves our protagonist shaken to the core. She consults with a doctor and tells him how she has been fighting with noise in her head and experiencing fear in her heart. It's like she has been waiting for something to happen and it has happened. As soon as the doctor advises her to have some warm milk to sleep better, we get to know from her secretary that she doesn't drink milk. She just wants those pills that will help her to sleep better. A J cut takes us back in time to when Kala could not get the basics right while practicing for a performance the next day. It seems she is still facing the cold nature of a mother that gets depicted by the muted cool color tone. We quickly realize that even after such a long time, Kala has not been able to receive a pat of appreciation from her mother. And as time went by, the cold nature of her mother seems to have become more dominant. That's the reason why she punishes her daughter for being incompetent by making her stand outside in the snow. This is the first hint of the reason behind the usage of snow previously. The snow is a reminder of that punishment. While Kala anxiously prepares for her first performance on stage, there is a direct attack with exposition to inform both the characters and the audience about a new singer who will perform after Kala, Jagat Batwal, a poor orphan who, unlike Kala, has learned his music under the roof of a Gurdwara. Kala's performance touches everyone's heart except for her mother. She is not as moved or mesmerized as compared to when she listens to the vocal prowess of Jagat's singing ability. The way he displays his talent brings a smile of pride to her face. And now, unlike everyone else, it is Kala who feels angry and worried at the same time. She notices how Jagat has taken over the spotlight as it is now pointing straight towards him. And if you look at this shot, you will notice a huge difference in lighting compared to when Kala was on stage. It feels like Jagat has become the voice of the gods and also the male voice that Kala's mother was yearning for all these years. The way she follows along with Jagat and awards him for his performance plants a seed of doubt in the mind of Kala. The doubt soon becomes a reality when Urmi gifts Jagat a new home by making him part of her family. Urmi ko apne ghar aur apni virasat ka asli chirag mil gaya. The spotlight once again narrates the tragedy of Kala's life. As the camera pans away from Urmi and Jagat, we notice how the lamps of the house start lighting up, but the spotlight on Kala slowly fades away. Jagat and his voice have once again illuminated the life of Urmi. But the same cannot be said about her daughter who is given the duty of serving milk to the guest every night. She is also informed by Jagat that she will be the one supporting him during his performance. Another revelation which breaks her from the inside. She goes out in the snow. Jagat tries to protect her from the snowfall and then we have this 360 degree top shot that moves away from the characters to reveal a maze which seems to be an inspiration from The Shining. 
But what's interesting is that this maze is not just a mere inspiration. Once again, we go back to the present when Kala receives the news of someone's death, another person that seemed to be connected with her horrific past. She's called on a radio show to comment on the same. The spotlight continues to put her in focus, but the background is completely dark. The camera dollies in towards her and once again, she receives another chilling reminder of her dark past that she has left behind. With show don't tell, the audience is taken into another flashback that once again exemplifies her mother's preference for Jagat over her own daughter. That too, when there is no formal stage performance. It feels like the voice of our protagonist has already become stale in front of Jagat's singing talent. Her mother doesn't seem to care at all for her daughter now. While she contemplates her loneliness and incompetency in this scene, Jagat accompanies her by telling her about how he will be working in the film industry with Chandan Lal Sanyal, as suggested by Urmi. This is probably the first time when Kala expresses her competitive spirit and tells Jagat about how she wants everything. Name, fame, the golden award, everything. But is she actually being true to herself? We don't know yet. Also, I couldn't understand the use of those shadows in the background. Not just for the sake of wordplay, but is this a foreshadowing for the song Ghode Par Sawar? I don't know. Let me know what you think about this. But moving ahead, we see how Kala's aspiration to win every award and become the best singer in Calcutta starts reflecting in her behavior. She poses in front of the same wall where the golden vinyl engraved with her name will be displayed in the future. However, her manifestations to win such accolades for her mother doesn't resemble at all with her mother. She is already engaged in getting a groom for her daughter, a new home. And the moment Kala begins to realize this, we immediately notice a transformation of her thoughts regarding the art form. And she says that she hates singing. As I mentioned earlier, her voice has become stale in the eyes of her mother. She no longer cares whether her daughter can sing or not. Her only job is to be presentable in front of everyone and support Jagat during his performance. In this shot, when Kala is standing amongst the dancers, we notice a surprising use of the soundtrack from the Mindhunter series that fits perfectly in terms of how everything in her life feels meaningless and horrifying. While Jagat takes ownership of the spotlight, Kala and her dreams start drowning in darkness. The references from the movie Black Swan help in depicting the feeling of ignorance experienced by our protagonist. She is once again asked to fetch a glass of milk for Jagat and for the first time, an unexpected voice of concern makes her feel recognized. Kala opens up about her frustration of being unrecognized and disregarded because of Jagat in front of Sanyal, but she also crosses the line of respect. Nonetheless, Sanyal explains to her how people will always get replaced but it is the art form that remains irreplaceable. Kala continues to follow the orders of her mother and supports Jagat in his performance. Everyone is instantly hooked on his voice. But little did he know that he will have to face a major obstacle during this time when everyone is looking up to him as the next musical legend. A recurring cough brings his magical voice to a halt. He becomes unwell and is unable to continue displaying his talent. Once again, Urmi rushes to comfort his son. Yes, she now considers him his legitimate heir and starts giving him all the motherly care that Kala has been longing for. However, there is a saying that setbacks can be turned into opportunities. Similarly, in this situation, Kala finds an opportunity to demonstrate her true potential. She starts humming and everyone except her mother pays attention. Her talent is appreciated by everyone except her mother and her efforts are applauded by everyone in the room except her mother because she has now completely shifted her focus on Jagat's health. She is in the spotlight, but it proves to be meaningless. And that's also conveyed lyrically with the song Pero Na Najar Se Najariya. Jagat's health begins to deteriorate and he loses the opportunity to play back singing. Plus, the spotlight also starts fading away. Ab ghar ke chirag ki law bujhti hui nazar aari hai. Once again, Kala finds an opportunity inspired by Jagat's setback. She now wants the chance of playback singing from the same music composer who actually came looking for Jagat with that offer. But in order to seize that opportunity, Kala takes a treacherous path. She seems to grab the opportunity in exchange for her vulnerability. She imitates her mother's act of love, which was a way of seeking favors for Jagat in the previous scene. We then move ahead to this moment when Jagat shares her devastated state of mind with Kala. Losing his voice feels like losing himself. 
He's fighting with noise in his head and experiencing fear in his heart. But Kala remains indifferent towards the depth of his emotions. The next morning, we see how Kala has impressed the music composer with her charm. He offers her a gig in Calcutta, which brings a smile to her face. But once again, her mother is not impressed. In fact, she goes on to say that she has stolen someone else's opportunity for her own benefit. She continues to stay cold-hearted toward her daughter. Kala cannot take it anymore and runs into the snowy forest only to witness the death of Jagat. Her world goes upside down as she sees his body hanging from the tree. But she doesn't rescue him and helps in taking the dead body to the house, jiska chirag ab hamesha ke liye bujh gaya. The blue butterfly acts as a link between the past and the present where Kala is once again seeing some visions. And this one sliding drop of mercury from her hand hints toward the possibility that Kala has Jagat's blood on her hands. After all, we learned in this scene that mercury is poisonous for a singer. She refuses to meet that music composer and instead calls her mother. But now there is no spotlight, just like the fear of loneliness. It is now time for the audience to learn about how Kala became the singer that she is today. She did accept the offer of playback singing, but since this opportunity was received in exchange for her vulnerability, Kala had to pay the price of that exchange. She had to pay the price to own the spotlight, an offer that she did not refuse and went against her mother's dictatorial behavior to prove her worth. But did she make a mistake by going against her mother? Maybe that's why she apologized in this scene for speaking her mind. However, it was too late. I mean, it was already a complicated relationship, but now her mother had cut all ties with Kala. She was instantly recognized for her singing talent and became more popular than the composer himself. But her mother never recognized her talent or her efforts to hone the talent. That's why she continues to receive those haunting reminders from the spirit of Jagat about how incompetent and undeserving she actually is. Soon, her fears reach a breaking point and she cannot take it anymore. The snowy blizzard returns in full force. She loses control of herself and falls off the stage. And now the makers of the film use show don't tell to reveal another big reason behind the fears of our protagonist. Kala was stuck in a maze of unrealistic expectations of her mother that were only fueled by the feeling of being incompetent in front of Jagat. She had given up everything to prove her worth but did not get anything in return even when it rightfully belonged to her. So, her fear of being left behind got aggravated because of the undying attention received by Jagat, especially from her mother. This eventually gave birth to jealousy, which is as poisonous as a drop of mercury for a singer. But most importantly, Kala was seeking the rightful validation from none other than her mother. And in the process of acquiring that validation, our protagonist devises a plan to shut down the voice of that one enemy who seemed to have snatched that rightful validation from her. She puts an end to being stuck in the maze by doing something which is as criminal as making a singer drink a drop of mercury. And the use of milk to poison Jagat represents her loss of innocence and the purity of her soul. But it seems that she could not make peace with herself as she never expected her actions to cause someone's life. She just thought that only the voice was taken away but she was continuously reminded how a life was taken away. She did get to be in the spotlight, but most importantly, the warmth of that spotlight was never equivalent to the warmth of love and admiration that she kept on seeking from her mother. The fame, the lights, the photographs, she never wanted any of that. Kala, a name that became a curse in her life. That is why she decided to put an end to this curse. She punished herself to remove the burden of her guilt and inability to prove her worth. But was she actually guilty? Or was it the mother that was guilty of asking too much from her daughter without caring for her dreams? I think the biggest culprit of this story is the unrealistic expectation that parents seem to have with their kids. Kala depicts this tragic reality by being set in the 1940s, but little did she know that even in the most modern worlds, this tragic reality continues to exist.